the center of the abortion rights debate the next few days. As the anniversary of the landmark Roe v. Wade decision nears, masses of pro-life demonstrators are descending on the nation's capital, albeit a snowy one tonight. Here is Chief Congressional Correspondent Mike Emanuel. Outside the White House, a pro-life group held this die-in demonstration featuring young people in a fetal position on Pennsylvania Avenue and red blankets being placed over them protesting abortion. This just one of the events related to the annual March for Life rally, marking 41 years since the landmark Roe v. Wade Supreme Court ruling. There's clearly an effort to energize youth support against abortion. Over a million a year. These are people like, like that could have been my friends. A third of my generation that's missing because of the great violence of abortion. Planned Parenthood also has its eyes on young people, telling Fox, quote, this year Planned Parenthood Generation Action Programs, already on more than 200 campuses across the country, are focused on harnessing the power, energy, and enthusiasm of young people to fight for reproductive freedom and for fundamental justice for all. Wake up this generation, Father God. It is time that we bring an end to the bloodshed. The day's March for Life event started with this vigil in front of a Washington, D.C. Planned Parenthood. Organized say they hope those attending this week's march will be inspired by the movement. There's no doubt that we're gaining supporters, and not only among the young, among every age group. And one of the reasons is that those who have had abortions are learning from experience that it doesn't solve any problems, it only creates more. A Fox News poll right before the 2012 election showed pro-choice voters outnumbering pro-life by 24 points with the 18 to 29-year-old subset. Then there was the trial and verdict in the gruesome case of abortion doctor Kermit Gosnell in Philadelphia. Philadelphia. A Fox News poll taken during the trial showed the gap had closed to nine points, 50 to 41. And those involved in the pro-life movement say disturbing stories like Gosnell have an impact. That stuff causes them to think about this because what Kermit Gosnell was doing for the most part was legal. The state of Pennsylvania just never bothered to inspect his abortion facility and they weren't required to. And this is how he was serving women. Organizers say the goal for this March for Life is to mobilize and encourage those who participate and to send a message to the government that they are not going away until unborn children are protected. Brett? And we'll have full coverage of the march tomorrow. Mike, thank you. A fight on a story we brought you in Monday's Grapevine about how one of the Democratic Party's rising stars may have padded her rags to riches origin story. Chief Washington correspondent James Rosen with the fact and the fiction behind Wendy Davis. On it After a filibuster against pro-life legislation in Texas last summer vaulted her to the front ranks of pro-choice politicians in the Democratic Party, State Senator Wendy Davis launched a gubernatorial bid facing off against GOP Attorney General Greg Abbott. She married young and by 19 was divorced and raising me as a single mother. I know she's kind of capitalized on her, you know, harrowing story of being a single mother um, that was struggling through law school and raising her daughters. And, um, and a lot of people have kind of sympathized with her over that. And now that it's come to light that, well, some of those details may not be totally correct, um, I think some voters or some people that were thinking of voting for her are going to have a problem with that. Indeed, the Dallas Morning News disclosed on Saturday that Davis was 21 when she was officially divorced from the first of her two husbands, that her second husband received custody of her two daughters and paid for much of her education at college and Harvard Law. At first, Davis told the paper, my language should be tighter. Later, she issued a statement saying, we're not surprised by Greg Abbott's campaign attacks on the personal story of my life as a single mother who worked hard to get ahead. But they won't work, she said, because my story is the story of millions of Texas women. General Abbott, how are you doing? Abbott, reported to enjoy a $20 million war chest, said through a spokesman, it's disappointing that a candidate would so cavalierly deceive voters about the most basic aspects of their life while providing inaccurate testimony in the process. If voters can't trust what Senator Davis says, how can they trust her to lead? If you're going to run on your narrative, you really ought to make sure your narrative is accurate. Her much larger problem is that Texas is still heavily Republican, and she is still a very significant underdog. Late today, the Davis campaign blasted out a feisty letter in the senator's defense and asking recipients to sign it as a show of support. There was no direct appeal for money, but campaign aides would not rule out future solicitations being directed at those who signed the letter. Brett. James, thank you.